Hello my friends, it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. Today we're going to talk about an exercise called the bodyweight bridge, also known as the backbend or wheel pose. Now this is one of my favorite exercises and it's a lot more important than most people think. We've talked about it before, so if you want a summarized version of this video, broken down in under one minute, I'll link it down below. Now if you want to skip right to the exercises, I'll leave a timestamp down below so you can go right to them. But I just want to say at this moment that the bridge is truly an underrated exercise. You usually don't see people do them if they even know about it. You see lots of people bicep curl because they can see their biceps grow. When you do push-ups or bench pressing, you can see your triceps grow, you can see your chest grow. But you can't really see the functional benefits from the bridge. You can't really see your spine grow in that sense. But one of the most important exercises you can do for your health and well-being is the bridge. Not only does it work and grow your back, which you need for virtually any kind of athletic movement, but it also trains your spine, which is kind of important. Bending the body backwards like this is something we're capable of, but most of us don't regularly do. And when we do start training this movement, some people find that aches and pains they've had for years suddenly start to go away, which really shouldn't come as that big of a surprise. Imagine if you never bent your knees or you never lifted anything with your arms. It probably wouldn't be an ideal condition either. And by the same token, strengthening your back and your spine with bridges, just like strengthening any other part of your body, can help prevent future injury. And if you're watching this and you've ever hurt your back, then you know how serious it can be. It can put you out of commission for weeks or months or years, and that's if you ever heal. Unfortunately, some damage, once it happens, appears to be permanent. Training your spine can help prevent that. And as far as lifting goes, again, almost anything we do is transmitted through our back. And if our back is weak, we won't be able to lift nearly as much. So whether you're after health or you're after strength and athleticism, in my opinion, you should try bridging, as in doing them at least once a week. Okay, let's start with progressions. As usual, we're gonna start with something we can do and we're going to train it until we're strong enough to move on. That's like the basis of everything we do. Everything else is detail. Okay, so the first progression is pretty simple. You just lie down, bring up your knees like this, and you just do the short bridge, which looks like this. Pretty simple, just about anyone can do this. Nice and easy up, pause, and come back down. Now when you go up, you can keep your body relatively straight. Some people choose to go a little bit further forward so there's a slight curvature, and that's fine too, but about straight should be right. Now right from the get-go, some people may find that even though this is a pretty gentle exercise, they may have some back pain, usually in the lower back. Now if this is caused by some kind of medical condition or you don't know what's causing it, then by all means pause the video and talk to a medical professional before continuing. You don't want to work through pain. It's totally possible to do these without pain. But here's something that you may want to try because if you lead with your hip, if you have some muscle weakness and you're compensating by trying to arc your back a little bit like this, and not leading with your hip, it puts a lot more strain on the lower back. You can't really tell that much. In fact, looking in the monitor right now at myself, I can't really tell a difference. If I lead with my waist like this and arc like this, it really kind of pinches my lower back and it hurts a lot more and not necessarily in a good way. But if I lead with my hip like this, it really just feels a lot better. So the wrong way would be like this. And the right way would look like this. It's just much easier and it's not a strain. It feels very natural, very intuitive. And especially if you have something called anterior pelvic tilt, then you may feel some extra pain from this exercise. You can look up some other videos and articles. Usually fixing it is pretty straightforward. Interestingly enough, bridges and different variations of bridges are used as therapy for anterior pelvic tilt. But if doing them causes you pain, then you may once again want to talk to a medical professional or look up some videos or content regarding anterior pelvic tilt. I'm going to make some content about it myself, and if I do, I'll link it down below or in a card somewhere on this video. Okay, next up is something called a straight bridge. While this is a little bit harder, most people should be able to do this at least somewhat. So you sit like this, you scoot forward just a little bit, and you can go up, like so. Nice and easy, up and down. Now, despite the name, as you approach the top part of the movement, you can curve a little bit if you want that extra bit of range of motion. But once again, lead with your hip. 
If you feel a lot of strain in your lower back, that may not be how it's supposed to feel. Try to lead with your hip and see if that reduces the pain and tension just a little bit. Now it's right at this point, maybe a little bit before or a little bit after, depending on the person, that I would say that some people may struggle with the later progressions. This is because I would say the bridge is a little bit more advanced than the other calisthenic standards, like the push-up, for example. With the push-up progression, generally speaking, if you can meet the progression standards, then you should be able to move on to the next exercise. But because the bridge is a slightly more advanced exercise and requires a little bit more mobility, people may start to struggle if they haven't built up with the other calisthenic standards. Now this is you, don't worry too much. You can still train your back with exercises like the squat, the leg raise, and the pull-up. Spend some extra time mastering these exercises, especially the deep squat and the leg raise, and then you can come back to your bridge training when you're ready. Now, some people don't need this next stage, but I find that if you're struggling to move between steps, you can always try to make one current step a little bit harder or the next one a little bit easier. In this case, we can make the straight bridge a little bit harder by raising our heels. So if we put our heels on something like this, I have to stay decent, <laughs> and we can go up like this. You may find that this exercise is a little bit more difficult near the top when you really try to straighten yourself out. That does help, so just do your best. And in the spirit of what we were just talking about, about making some exercises easier, from this stage on, we're really gonna start moving towards bridges where we curve our body back. So we're gonna make bridges a little bit easier, and we can do this by putting ourselves on an incline. So if you find something like a bed or a chair, anything that's stable and can keep you safe, you should be able to do these. So to start getting in position, it's a little bit ugly, but just lean back, bear with me. If you have some railings like this, it can really help. You don't want to find something that hurts your wrists too much. That's kind of the issue with doing this on a bed, is your wrists will bend into the springs and that can kind of cause a little bit of strain. But something like this would be ideal. Go up like this, then you can do high angle bridges like this. Generally speaking, the higher your hands, the easier the exercise. So if you find something around hip height, that'd be a good place to start. But if you need something a little bit easier, you can go a little bit higher. If you want something harder, then you can find a stool or something. Now, as you're practicing that last step, you should be getting somewhat comfortable with the bridge position. And I want you to try to experiment. There's not really a systematic way for everyone to do this. Just experiment with getting into the bridge position. Now in my previous one minute video, I show you how you can use a chair to do that. But I was thinking that you could probably just do it from the top part of the short bridge, where you go up like this, go up as high as you can, reach back, place your hand like this, fingers facing your toes, and go up like this. So it's not a full range of motion, but you can still try to get into the bridge position. Now your first bridge is gonna be pretty ugly, but try to perfect it over time. Now while you are primarily doing this for reps, or at least that's what this video is showing, when you can reach that top position, then you can really start honing your bridge hold. You can start making micro improvements to your form, like learning to breathe evenly, and slowly straightening your arms and legs. And from that point on, you can get into a bridge however you want, like this, and just do head bridges like this. Now at this point, you may really start to notice that some forms of bridging are harder than others. In fact, I don't know if you can really tell, but my breathing is somewhat restricted by this movement. And if you go too much towards your legs like this, you may find that it's a lot harder on your wrist. So if that's too much on your wrist, straighten out your legs a little bit more and it should be easier. Now after you hit this point, it's really just about going lower and lower over time, similar to a squat, until you can do a bridge from the ground up. So you can use different objects to measure that. You can use rolled up paper towels, you can use a basketball. Just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna use this paper towel roll like this. I'll lean back into it. You kind of don't wanna crush it like I am now, <laughs> otherwise it goes lower. But go up like this, go down, just until your back barely touches your object. This is probably a little bit too low to start. You can find a stool or something that goes up to here. But go down and touch it and come back up and just work your way down with smaller objects over time. Now, I shouldn't have to say this, but make sure the objects you use to measure your progress are soft and safe. Don't use metal, 
don't use glass bottles, and don't use like hand grenades. I'm not telling you what to do, I know some of you really dislike that, but these are just things you should strongly consider if you want to stay safe and get healthier and stronger over time. And eventually, like I mentioned before, you should be able to start doing bridges from the ground up, like so. Go up nice and slow. Try to stay balanced between your hands and your feet. Kind of stretch. Make micro adjustments at the top and come back down. So that's all I have for you today. I really hope that can help you out. It's just a short, simple video showing you how to build up the bodyweight bridges. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Now I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to start making and attaching an article for every major video that I do. So it'll just be in the link below when I make it. There's always some questions that I wish I had answered. There's always some point that someone brings up in the comments. I'm like, ah, I should have mentioned that in the video, but the video's already up. Sometimes it's been up for months and months and months. But if I keep a link to an article in the description, then people who have those questions can go right to the link and have their questions answered even if they're watching this video like 10 years from now. Now, if you wanna know more about bridges and bodyweight training in general, check out the book Convict Conditioning. I'm not sponsored by the company. I'm not sponsored at all, but check it out. There's a very strong section about bridges. The guy really likes them and that's where I first heard about bridges. Now, before I end this video, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Summer, the season because if this were winter or even late fall, then I wouldn't be able to film during this time because it would be pitch black. You wouldn't be able to see me at all. I guess you could hear me. But thank you so much to Summer and the Sun for making this video right now possible. I hope you have a beautiful day.